Midjourney recently rolled out another game-changing update with the much-anticipated character reference feature. Character reference is similar to style reference, but instead of matching a visual aesthetic provided by a reference image, it tries to match the character. This is great news, especially for those of us working on storytelling with visual narratives where the same character appears in different scenes or outfits. In this video, I'll share everything from the basics to creating images with multiple reference characters. So make sure you give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get started. So let's start with the basics of how to use character reference. First, you'll wanna type in your prompt, then add the dash dash C-R-E-F parameter, a space, and paste in the URL of the image that contains the character that you wanna use. If you're prompting on Midjourney's website instead of on Discord, I'll show you how C-Ref looks on there in just a minute. So whenever you include a character reference in your prompt, Midjourney will try to generate results that visually match the appearance and likeness of that character. Character reference works best with images created by Midjourney, and it's not going to copy exact details like designs on clothing, but it should roughly capture the overall visual characteristics of your character. As you can see here with our pink haired woman, while Midjourney maintains her core look, it doesn't perfectly recreate outfit details. It's pretty good at keeping the color of the shirt by default, but not necessarily the shirt style. If you need more accuracy with details such as the shirt style, you'll wanna make sure that you include those details in your text prompt. One major benefit of using a character reference is the ability to place the same character into multiple scenes and poses. Here, I'm using the same character reference, but have placed her in a coffee shop, at a party, working on a laptop, and standing in front of a white building. So using C-Ref makes it much easier to create visual narratives with the same characters. In addition to C-Ref, we can use the character weight parameter dash dash CW to control how closely Midjourney adheres to the clothing and sometimes hairstyle of the reference character. Character weight ranges from zero to 100, with 100 being the default that tries to fully match the character's likeness and clothing. When character weight is zero, Midjourney only locks onto the face, allowing you to change clothing while retaining the character's facial features. In this example, my prompt includes the text blue shirt. As character weight decreases, Midjourney starts to ignore her outfit in the reference photo and pays more attention to the outfit that I've described in the prompt. Her face is still similar, but her shirt changes. So character weight works differently from Midjourney's other strength parameters, such as style weight, a lower character weight does not mean make a character that is less similar to the reference because Midjourney will always lock onto the face regardless of the character weight. So you wanna decrease the strength of the character weight from the default of 100 when you want to change a character's outfit or if you're having difficulty getting the character into a different pose. If you're creating images through Midjourney's website, you can use the C-Ref and CW parameters just as I've shown here when you type your prompt into the Imagine bar. You can also choose to upload a character reference by clicking the plus sign on the Imagine bar, or you can drag and drop your image. Be sure to select the little person icon here so that Midjourney knows to use that image as a character reference. If you're interested in learning more about creating images on Midjourney's website, please check the link to my video in the description below. Now that we've covered the basics of character reference and character weight, let's go through some different techniques and applications. One of my favorite uses of character reference is transferring a character to different visual styles. You can prompt for stylized renditions like an oil painting, a vintage photograph, or comic book art. Just because your character starts as an illustration or a photograph doesn't mean it has to stay that way. With some creative prompting, you can explore your character through vastly different style lenses. And you don't necessarily need to include anything about the character in your text prompt. In these examples, I only described the style. Once a C-Ref is defined, Midjourney will aim to put that character in your results. Some of my favorite character references so far have been ones that I created using Midjourney's anime trained model, Niji, and then transfer to a photographic style with V6. If you wanna try creating characters using Niji, just include the parameter dash dash Niji after your text prompt. In addition to maintaining character similarity with C-Ref, you can take things to the next level by combining character reference with Midjourney's style reference feature. If you're not familiar with style reference, I highly recommend checking out my SREF deep dive video. Style reference lets you use a reference image to define the overall artistic style and color palette that Midjourney should apply to your results. Combining a character reference with a style reference allows you to not only keep a similar character across image generations, but also a similar visual style. 
It's a great approach for increasing the visual cohesiveness of scenes that you're trying to convey. You can try using style reference images to apply a cinematic movie style with teal orange color grading, an abstract geometric style, or a specific illustration style. You can even use the same image as both a character reference and a style reference. Style reference is a very powerful feature and it's probably my favorite mid-journey feature which makes it really fun to combine with character reference. Character reference isn't just limited to human subjects. You can use any image as your C-Ref input, including non-human characters or even abstract patterns and shapes. Here I gave Midjourney a cute little monster as our character reference. Midjourney was able to pick up on the core shapes and features of the reference. Now it's not going to give you an exact copy of the character, but the reference image is a great guide. Some types of non-human characters are going to have more consistent results than others, but I think the fun part is just experimenting. Taking it a step further, here I used an abstract image and let Midjourney make up a character from there. When you use an abstract image like this, Midjourney will translate those warped forms and textures into new character-like entities, which I think can look pretty unique and imaginative. So far we've focused on using character reference for a single character, but what about scenes with multiple characters? This is where it gets a bit trickier. Let's keep it simple and use this image of two friends meeting for coffee as our reference, and then create new images showing both characters. One approach is to use the entire two character image as the character reference. However, to prevent Midjourney from blending the characters or choosing one face over the other, we need to help Midjourney map the characters correctly by including descriptive text in the prompt that specifies each character and their positioning. Here I've highlighted some key phrases that I use to do this, and here's one of the image results. This method isn't foolproof, I did still get several images that had the characters blended together or where both people in the image were the same person. So it does take a bit of experimenting. A second approach is to use Midjourney's pan feature. First, I cropped the original reference image to just contain the woman and put her in a fashion photo shoot. I also dropped the character weight to zero so that Midjourney gave her different clothing. Then I clicked this arrow button to pan to the right. I replaced the woman's character reference URL with one containing the man's character reference. I also modified the prompt text to describe the new character. And here's the result. Not too bad. You can get similar results with custom zoom as well. Here I clicked custom zoom and again updated the prompt text and replaced the woman's CREF URL with the man's URL. I also changed the aspect ratio and zoom amount so that Midjourney had more space to work with. Here's one of the results. Pan and zoom won't always work this well. One of the downfalls is that it can be difficult to control the relative size differences between multiple characters as you can see in this result. Lastly, the very region method lets you generate a base image with or without a character reference and then use very region to swap in each character's face. Here I created an image in which I described the two characters, but I did not use a C ref in the prompt. Then I used very region to replace the man's face. During the very region, I added his image as the C ref and modified the prompt text to remove any mention of the woman. I upscaled one result and then did the same thing to swap in the woman's face. After a few iterations, here's the final image that I chose. So what makes a good character reference? For best results, you want to use a character reference image that was made by Midjourney. Using non-Midjourney images can lead to more distortion and inconsistencies, especially with facial features. Ideally, your character reference should have a clearly defined subject with distinct facial features visible. The more that Midjourney has to guess, the less coherent your results will be. Portraits and full body images tend to work well. It can also help to have the character in multiple poses, such as a front portrait, side profile, or action pose. You can then choose which image to use based on the scene that you're prompting for. Or include multiple CREF URLs to reinforce key details. Just separate each URL with a space. If you're having difficulty getting a character into different poses, try lowering the character weight down to 50 or 60. This can help free up body movement in the results. Or you can paste an image URL at the beginning of your prompt that shows the character in the pose that you want. Image URLs that are placed at the beginning of a prompt are called image references. There are a lot of ways to use image references, and in the context of CREF, they can be helpful for guiding character pose and composition. There are many nuanced techniques to explore with character reference, and experimentation is the key to finding the right workflow for your needs. Midjourney's character reference is yet another feature that opens up more creative possibilities. While it's not perfect, I think it's pretty good for a first version. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. 
Let me know down in the comments if you try out any of these techniques, have questions, or want to share any other character reference tips. Please make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, all the things. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.